Hi everyone, I am Gabriel Sauvage, Assistant Sound Designer at Coro Sound. In the context of the project that I'm working on, I had to find a way to quickly denoise a lot of uh, ambient samples so that added to each other uh, within the game, they're not going to create that big chunk of noise floor that uh, might be unpleasant or fatiguing to the ears of the player. So this is what I was originally working with, which is a rain forest uh, sample, a lot of droplets. As you might hear, there's a clear audible noise uh, hits to it. And this is what I ended up with. So again, uh, I really achieved to isolate those drops from the base noise floor uh, that uh, was originally present within the sample. Uh, and actually the way I did it is very, very uh, well, simple. You first need to find a place within the sample uh, where you're going to have the least amount of uh, dynamic uh, transients or content, uh, dynamic content possible. Uh, it might be hard uh, following what you have to work on. Uh, for example, here there's a lot of you know droplet sound but uh, I don't remember where it was, <laughs> but I found a place where there was almost like no drops. And so uh, you start to, you know, uh, playing that uh, noise. And I started to apply a, a processing chain uh, to it to isolate uh, first the sustain from the transient uh, content and then learn that uh, sustain uh, transient uh, noise content uh, with a denoiser in order to uh, finally uh, remove it completely from uh, the original sample. So you start with something like transgressor, you can also use split EQ, I guess, uh, and you uh, end up with this. So again, you know, tiny bits of sustained noise. Then you might want to reduce uh, further the attack of the sound and to amplify the sustain. So really, you really have almost only uh, the noise here you can clearly hear that there's still a bit of you know uh, water splashes and stuff but again you have to find the right spots in the sample for it and finally you learn uh, that uh, spot with a specific denoiser called uh, Bruce Free and it's from Clevergrand some super cool uh, developers shout out to them and the reason why I'm using this uh, compared to like other uh, types of denoiser which are working with uh, phase opposition um, is that the, first of all the problem with phase opposition techniques is that it can uh, quickly create a lot of artifacts uh, especially if the chunk of noise that you try to remove is you know very like the threshold is very high and that's really something that you do not want in that kind of scenarios because there's a lot of dynamic content and thus that means there's going to have a lot of artifacts if you do that so Bruce Free instead works with uh, a denoiser that uh, is essentially a lot of multiple, you know, uh, tiny gates uh, spread across the across the, the frequency spectrum, and so this is what you end up with. But when you level match it and that you remove the previous uh, transient designers. And when you start uh, to remove that noise, of course, you will have to play with the release and uh, attack uh, parameters and also the threshold. Um, but you might also need to add a bit of the uh, higher frequencies that were lost in the uh, noise removing process. And the edge parameter is very good for that. For example, I'm clearly hearing the drops, but you know, they lack a bit of volume and presence. So doing that. And that's basically all of what there is to it. Um, so I hope that you really enjoy that, um, you know, quick uh, ID of uh, design. 
and that you uh, might end up apply it to you know your current project again uh, to show the big difference between the two this is what we were originally uh, with and this is what we have that's it for this uh, quick video and uh, I wish you a good day bye